Good afternoon, everyone. Let me turn on my portable microphone. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Good. Uh, welcome to the premiere of the ASAM Criteria software. Today's the first day that we are debuting this new product. Um, it's the culmination of over 20 years of effort on the ASAM criteria. It's the realization of a dream that the society has had. Um, it first became an idea in 1994 when I got to know David E. Lee, the author, the lead author of the ASAM criteria. And I, as a junior faculty at Harvard, I had read through sections of the book, and I said to him, you know, you've written this beautifully. It's full of pearls of wisdom, and it's really suitable for statistical analysis and, and research. You should really do research on this thing. And he said, that's a wonderful idea. Why don't you do it? <laughs> and that's why I'm here today. So. Uh, we're going to see how this has evolved and what it's designed to do. And you're actually going to do a hands-on workshop of using the software. And you'll see a video of a mock patient and actually enter data and get a taste. We're not going to go through a whole interview, but you're going to get a taste of different types of questions and sequences and how it's organized. And then we're going to give you a printout of the results of this assessment. So let me start. With a disclosure, um, I and Rodney Conrad, Senior Vice President of FBI Systems, are both full-time employees of a corporate entity. Um, Paul Early, who may get to pop in, but has been an integral part of this process, um, uh, also has honorary and consulting fees from industry. And um, you can see that uh, my roles are uh, dual. One is as a vice president for Alpernese, the pharmaceutical company, although that's not directly relevant to this work. Um, for this work, what you need to know is that I have my own private S corporation with an employee of one, um, and, and, that, and you're looking at them. Um, and the sole purpose of that organization is to help ASAM commercialize this software. I am ASAM's compensated agent for obtaining a commercial software manufacturer to sponsor the national launch of the ASAM Criteria software. We're going to go through the rationale for this, the hands-on experience. You're going to get to dialogue back and forth constantly throughout that process. We have people on hand to help you, to come to your workstation and help you find where to press the button and so forth. So don't get worried at all. Um, we're going to have a lot of interactive discussion, and then we're actually going to survey you also online and collect input from you on what you think. So the background has really three key parts. One is ASAM's goals. Two is the Harvard Business School's year-long study of the ASAM criteria software. And then SAMHSA's efforts, which have been pivotal in making this all a reality. So let's start with what's the scope of this project. Who are the stakeholders? It starts, of course, with the patient. That's, that's our number one priority. And the counselor or the interviewer, it could be us. In some cases, you'll see we have data that physicians actually are involved in direct assessment of patients. There are supervisors overseeing that process in many cases. We operate within systems, treatment programs, or networks of treatment programs. And then there are accreditors and certification groups Sometimes it's a state contract, a county, and then there's managed care. Now, probably the most critical interaction in all of this is the relationship between the counselor and managed care, because that's where the authorization for the treatment often occurs. So that'll be the focus of our discussions. And then there's an employer or payer. They may hire or contract with managed care to manage the benefit and the resources but not actually do it themselves, but they have a stake. And finally, researchers have a stake. And you'll see we've had to think about how to include researchers in analyzing how to continuously improve the software. 
ultimately, obviously, our goal for this serious public health problem is that society be the beneficiary. The ACM criteria have been out for over 20 years, as you all know, and there has been a national study that was funded by NIDA. Um, it got authorization through the Clinical Trials Network, and the University of Georgia National Treatment Center study <coughs> conducted the survey. And they surveyed 450 independent treatment programs. So these were not the programs that are wholly owned by government, but a representative grouping of everybody else. And over 70% of those programs surveyed reported that they were actually using the ASAM criteria already by 1996. So the adoption rate has been enormous. It has taken over the field. But that doesn't mean much when there is no standard way to implement the ASAM criteria. So basically, the field likes the dimensions, likes the concept of placement and level of care according to need and minimizing restrictiveness and resources. But it doesn't have any meaning as a standardized, comprehensive, reliable process. When they analyzed whether programs of certain types were likely or less likely to have adopted ASAM, they found some interesting things. For profits were half as likely to adopt the ASAM criteria as nonprofits. Programs that had only one level of care, an outpatient program, were also substantially less likely to adopt than multi level programs. Programs that handled dual diagnosis patients routinely were more than three times more likely to have adopted the ASAM criteria. And the most interesting thing is the impact of the ASAM criteria on program survival rate in the era of managed care. Programs that had closed within the previous 24 months were much less likely to have adopted the ASAM criteria prior to that time. And programs that had closed within the previous six months of the survey were the most unlikely to have adopted the ASAM criteria. Now, causality isn't necessarily predicted by that association, but it's interesting that programs that didn't have the ASAM criteria in place were substantially more likely to have shut down. So when ASAM asked me to go out and find a commercial vendor to take over a national launch of the ASAM criteria, I turned to the Harvard Business School and asked them <coughs> to help this nonprofit professional society analyze the business prospects for commercializing the software and generating national adoption and a revenue stream to support ASAM's committees and the publication and improvement of the criteria. And these four students were assigned to help. And if you notice a genetic resemblance between the male member and your speaker, um, I will acknowledge the relationship. <laughs> and they set about, with their faculty supervision, surveying 30 key stakeholders who had national level experience in this area. And that included providers, payers, government nonprofit people, and software developers. Some of these were the leading managed care companies in America, including Aetna, Magellan, Pfizer Permanente. Uh, some of these were government people who have been major forces in impacting improvement in quality across the country. Nady Chalk, who led the Quality Improvement Initiative at CSAT, was interviewed for this. Uh, VA people were interviewed, Carol McDade, who is probably the addiction field's leading lobbyist in Capitol Hill, uh, and uh, the, one of the leaders in the whole open source health world, um, Skip McGay, uh, was a very active contributor to the Harvard Business Students um, an evaluation. So there was tremendous input. CRC was one of the sources of stakeholder input, and that's important because they operate 145 centers across the U.S. and treat 30,000 people a day. Um, so they're the largest in the U.S., so it was good to have them providing input. And they were very generous 
in analyzing their situation and reporting it to the business school. They found that they were devoting a significant effort to payer approval. Each center, each one facility, a rehab, would have three to five full-time equivalent staff dedicated exclusively to working on utilization review. And 20% of their cases were being contested by payers, and 30% of their physician time was lost. That is lost from taking care of patients, because they were interacting with the payers so much. And they said, if you could just reduce that a little, the software would be substantially cost-saving for us at CRC. And they felt that increased reliance on health IT could really improve their outcomes. The students also surveyed 95 ASAM members two years ago at this meeting. And in that survey, they found that ASAM members would be highly interested in such software, but their leading concerns would be how much would it cost and how much time would it take. <coughs> Over a third said that physicians who are earning $110,000 a year or more are conducting direct patient assessments and treatment programs. And 46%, so nearly half, indicated that the assessments are taking between 60 and 90 minutes. So that becomes the target that we will get the software down to. So there's some refinements involved in getting there, but we know how to do that, and that's the target. They said that there would be significant value with ACM's electronic criteria could save time with payers. 31%, so nearly a third, are wasting a half a day or more just to find out if they've got an insurance authorization to treat their patient. So the treatment centers, according to the survey, would perceive a positive value proposition if the software would improve treatment outcomes, 80% said that, standardize assessments and improve them, three quarters said that, reduce time negotiating with the insurance company, two thirds said that. And they were also interested in certification as an ASAM compliant treatment program, or CEU credits and CME credits for the staff delivered through the software. It's a very interesting prospect, which we'll talk about. But first, I'd like you to see the software. <coughs> so the value proposition is for patients improving outcomes, for payers decreasing their long-term costs by improving the outcomes of patients with better placement. There's a lot of research on this, which this is not the place to go into, but there are 20 papers on how the ASAM criteria do this, driven by data. Decreasing expense and unnecessary over-treatment, increasing inter-rate reliability, these are all things payers want. And for providers, for us in here in the room, decreasing disputes about reimbursement, decreasing the administrative burden of getting the approvals, increasing the speed of the payment turnaround, increasing and improving the training to new counselors. New counselors have a terrible time doing comprehensive assessment. They're just not aware of all the different things that potentially need to be assessed, depending on the patient's particular problems. And the people really felt they needed to get sophisticated reports and analyses once their patient population in a, in a clinic or program has been analyzed over a six month or 12 month period. So here's where we are today. You already know that the book, the ASM Criteria, is being revised substantially. And that's going to come out at the state-of-the-art course in October. Well, the ACM Criteria software is, has also been revised and is also going to come out at the state-of-the-art course in October. So it's now entering a six-month phase of beta testing. And to get effective and reliable treatment planning, you're going to need to use both together. You can't use the software without having the book. Um, the software has been rewritten from the research version that I used to study many different populations and different countries. And that's been rewritten for the end user, the counselor, the social worker, the nurse, the psychologist, and the physician in US treatment programs. And SAMHSA has sponsored that entire rewrite. They have done a masterful job of setting the specifications, requiring the objectives so that it will fit into US medical care, healthcare, IT. And the book and the software are synchronized so that the definitions, the levels of care, the dimensions, the criteria in the book are exactly replicated in the software. 
every decision rule in that book for adult admission criteria is translated into a question or more, a few questions in some cases, that come from already validated, reliable research instruments that inform that decision rule. And that is all assembled into a structured interview that guides the interviewer step by step by step, branches according to the patient's answers. And this is a very intricate process. So, the commercial plan, as recommended by the Harvard Business School study was, create a comprehensive counselor-based tool, um, have it implement all the decision goals, have it be quantitative, reliable, have it produce valid level of care recommendations, and also provide justifications for how it got those recommendations. It's been in use in the country of Norway translated into the Norwegian language over the last three years. So there are 10 clinics across Norway that have been using it. I've just seen the analysis of their data. After three months following a matched treatment, they are finding that the patients are doing better on six out of seven ASI composite score dimensions. So that's a very consistent benefit of matching. The commercialization, uh, sorry, the, so the goals include not just being a US standard, but being an international standard. So 